Hi guys, my name is Tom, and in this video I want to talk about the latest release from Siri, which is this 28 to 85 millimeter full frame zoom cine lens. So some of the key features that I want to first mention about this lens is that, uh, as you can see, it's a zoom lens. And like I mentioned, it's a 28 to 85 millimeter focal length, uh, which allows you to you know, get a fairly nice wide angle to a pretty uh, long telephoto kind of shot uh, all in one package and it covers a full frame image sensor. So that essentially means that it has a three times zoom ratio when you go from all the way 28 to 85 millimeters. Now another nice feature is that this is a par focal lens. Uh, if you don't know what that means, it basically just means that uh, as you're zooming in or zooming out and changing the focal lengths on this lens, the focus distance does not change. So for example, let's say you zoom in on your subject, you get your focus perfectly there and then let's say you zoom out or you know halfway or all the way out the focus point will stay exactly uh, as you said it originally and the same thing as for example if you're zoomed out you can focus on your shot then zoom in for close-up again your focus will not change which in case you didn't know uh, that's not the case with most still photography zoom lenses as you guys can see up here i have this lens paired up with my zcam f6 and it's attached uh, using the PL mount and that's because uh, there's two essentially mount versions that you can get this lens in. It's the PL mount or Canon EF mount. Now you can also use adapters so that you can uh, pair either version of this lens with either an E mount camera or an RF mount. Now this being a cine lens, uh, the aperture is measured in T-steps and uh, the range that it has is it's all the way open at 3.2 T-steps and you can close it down to 22 T-steps. So let me talk a little bit about the quality you're gonna get uh, with this lens. Uh, as you guys can see already from my sample footage, this lens is exceptionally sharp, uh, even when you open it all the way at T3.2. But usually I would close it down at I mean, one T-step or maybe even half a T-step just to get a little bit extra sharpness uh, and just to get a you know, bit of bigger depth of field. Just makes it easier for focusing. But either way, uh, just as is the case with all of the other lenses that Sirius has released so far, uh, whether you use it wide open or not, you're gonna get nice sharp images. Another impressive feature with this lens is that it l essentially has no focus breathing. Uh, in all of my tests that I've done, it's, it's so minimal, basically it's unnoticeable, especially once you have a moving subject uh, or the camera you know, is panning. Uh, you will not be noticing any focus breathing. So if that's something that you're concerned about, because you know, a lot of the zoom lenses have really bad focus breathing, uh, you can rest assured that this lens uh, has virtually no uh, focus breathing. Another thing to notice when it comes to the quality of the images you're going to get with this lens is that it creates what I would call a very clean looking image. So uh, it's not going to have any artifacts um, in terms of, uh, for example, like glares and things like that. The, the uh, lens flares actually on this are, again, barely visible. Even when you're pointing this lens directly at like some really strong light source like the sun, uh, it's very, very minimal. The, the lens flares are hard to see. Uh, you will in some occasions get some of those light blooming kind of effects but again you really have to like point the light directly into the lens and not use a matte box or anything like that uh, but if you're using it in the kind of configuration like I'm using it up here with the Polar Pro matte box then uh, you're again you, you're gonna expect to see a very clean looking image now that might not be something that you know some of you guys want I know for my work sometimes uh, when I'm doing very kind of abstract kind of uh, very filmic or organic kind of work, I like to call it. Uh, I do like to have a lot of those little artifacts, blooming effects, and, and kind of really in-your-face kind of lens flares, which I really loved with the anamorphic lenses that Sirui has released. Well, this lens, like I said, in those terms, it doesn't have that, but at the same time, it gives you a very nice, clean, uh, cinematic-looking image. Now I want to talk about the build quality of this lens. It is very solidly built made entirely of different alloys obviously aside from the glass elements now the zoom ring up here uh, has sort of this rubber coating on it which makes it easy again if you want to adjust the, the focal length of your lens uh, but otherwise like i said very solidly built now it is big as you can see and it is quite heavy and because of that it's not maybe the best sort of run and gun lens now in some of the situations that i've used this lens so far I have been able to kind of run and gun with it, you can say, 
but you then really do have to make sure that you have uh, just a solidly built rig. So uh, top handle that allows you to really take the weight of the camera and this lens. Uh, and you definitely want to then have a rail system with some kind of a lens support. Now the lens does have a lens support attachment, uh, so that makes it easier for that. But I would really, especially if you're not using the PL mount, I would not recommend using this lens without some kind of lens support because it is so heavy and it sticks out so much. Uh, now, in some cases, I have attached this and just had it attached using the PL mount without any rail support and it does work, but again, it's probably for long term, it's not the best practice. I do like the way that the lens is marked. Now, they use both metric and uh, imperial in marking system, very clearly marked on both sides of the lens. So again, it's a lens that's very well suited for uh, cinema work or film work, where you're usually gonna have a first camera operator and then the second AC usually on the opposite side, you know, pulling focus with like a, you know, uh, follow focus unit like you see up here. Uh, so he can clearly see all the markings that the person on the other side of the camera sees. Uh, and it's the same for the f-stops, for the focal length and uh, for your focus uh, distance. Uh, and also all three of these rings are geared uh, for your standard follow focus kind of a you know, gear setup. So again, you can use any of those follow focus accessories um, so that you can remotely even let's say, operate, whether it's the focus ring, the zoom or the aperture rings. Now the front of the lens uh, has a 110 millimeter thread so you can attach any of your glass and, and filters. Uh, now in my case I'm using the Polar Pro kind of a slip-on matte packs. So if you're using any of those standard cinema style matte packs uh, with the standard 110 opening then you'll be able to put it on the lens and it attaches securely because the front element of the lens does not rotate as you're adjusting the, the focal length or the, the focus of your lens. Now, something to keep in mind when you're using this lens, especially when you're using it at, uh, all the way zoomed out at uh, 28 millimeters, is that if, if you have a lot of clear uh, and easy to see lines in your shot, then you will notice some distortion. Uh, like for example, in these shots here, you can see the horizon when I zoom out all the way, it starts bending a little bit, depending whether it's on the upper portion of the frame or the bottom it's gonna bend the other way. As I start zooming into the shot, you'll notice that horizon straightens out. Now the distortion is very minor, and again, it's only noticeable if you're really gonna have these clear, easy to see lines. Now, of course, in most scenarios, you're not gonna notice that slight distortion. Now, another thing to keep in mind uh, is with the focus ring, which it has a really long throw when you go all the way from the closest focusing distance, which is 2.3 feet, uh, all the way to infinity. Uh, but something to keep in mind with that is that the first basically five feet uh, takes up most of that, that uh, you know, ring rotation. So you really can dial in those close focus points up to five feet. Now from five feet to 10 feet, uh, taking up, you still have enough play there where you can really kind of dial in your focus. Obviously, again, it's not going to be as detailed as, uh, as the first five feet. Now, where it can get a little bit difficult nailing perfectly the focus is when you're going in uh, from 10 feet all the way to infinity because it only uses the last bit of the focus ring. Uh, so sometimes you might kind of you know, be not sure if you're exactly there and, and tiny little adjustments can make quite a bit of a difference. Uh, but of course, that's only when you're zoomed in all the way, uh, at 85 millimeters especially, and you have the lens open all the way up. If you zoom out, you, again, probably won't make much of a difference because the depth of field uh, gets so much deeper that almost everything is in focus. Uh, and then again, especially once you close down and uh, close the aperture a little bit, then again, you're going to have a deeper depth of field. So gonna make it that much easier to nail the focus anything beyond 10 feet but below 10 feet like I said you have enough area there where you can really get uh, the focus perfectly and it's precisely because of that reason that even though a lot of times I was shooting this lens by myself I still prefer to use uh, follow focus like this manual one that I have up here because with the follow focus that just makes it that much easier to uh, get your focus always perfectly right because if I had to do this by hand, actually grabbing the lens, like I said, the, from 10 feet all the way to infinity, it could be a little bit hard sometimes.
So if you guys like the kind of images I've been able to get with this lens and you're interested, you want to find out more info or maybe even get the lens for yourself, then uh, just follow the link in the description of this video to the Indiegogo campaign that Siri has launched uh, where you'll be able to get this lens for 20% off the regular retail price, which right now that comes out to around $2,300. And also over there you can check out the, the different mount adapter versions, all that stuff uh, and some of the other specs uh, about this lens. Uh, anyways, hopefully you guys enjoy this video and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!